Wow. All right. I don't have time to do a video on this. I just wanted to give you the link to this Los Angeles Times article on Grindall 61. Oh my god. Okay. They are taking, um, well, I don't know, what they consider to be conspiracy theorists, what they consider to be the crazy, crazy lunatic fringe population that are talking about the truth and they are using so many now as an example and I am so sorry that Grindall 61 is scary and they I, it, it's amazing to me how we are living and I have lived my entire life surrounded by Americans who just talk principle but live an unprincipled life and when you live a principled life when you actually live the principles that you speak you get attacked sometimes you get attacked by mainstream media sometimes the LA Times will attack you and that's exactly what they're doing with Gary yeah how many times those of you who actually live the principles that you speak, how many times were you shamed, laughed at, and treated, you know, like something horrible because you felt that the principles were important? You know, it, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, uh, the sirens going off. I'm not doing this again, but... Uh, Okay, the sirens, the police car has left us. Yeah, so um, it, it doesn't matter how small it is. It, doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, it, my adult friends. I mean, my God, I was in my early 50s. My friends were like in their late 50s and early 60s, some uh, 70. They're all gossiping girls like they're in seventh grade and yeah when I would say something the roll of the eyes oh miss miss morally superior Carol oh my god yeah so and I I don't you know the people will read this and think that the LA Times is actually reading something factual it began as a $280 citation for using a video camera in a courthouse. But to Gary Galino, at stake was much more than the couple hundred bucks he was told to pay. At stake, there was much more at stake. An attorney for an anti-illegal immigration activist and prolific YouTuber. Now, I, yes, he's posted videos on the illegal immigration problem we've got in our country, but I, he's Agenda 21 slash 2030. Most people do know, you know, but he's fighting the corruption and he's fighting an awful lot. And that's, that, I mean, the LA Times should be doing an article using him as an example, as an example of a mature, serious young man who is active in his community trying to fight the corruption and the illegality that's going on and they should be using him as an example of a quote-unquote good American He told the judge Friday that the four-hour trial over the fine was really about preventing government abuse of power, protecting the rights of journalists, and ensuring that citizens can hold public offices, uh, um, officials accountable. If he is convicted, it'll chill speech. It'll chill journalism. It'll say the federal government has a superpower to do whatever it wants. That's what his attorney said. This is unprecedented. This is what we expect to see in a police state. 
a federal prosecutor dismissed the rhetoric, arguing that the Class C Mr. Minor charge was simply about Galena's refusal to follow a security officer's orders. The unusual legal battle, battle came after Galeno 32 tried to bring a video camera into a meeting of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Civilian Oversight Commission last year. California law specifically allows the public to use recording devices at such meetings, but the commission's meeting in August was held at a federal appellate court building where filming is prohibited. The commission, a civilian panel set up to monitor the sheriff's department and listen to public concerns about the agency, had been gathering in different locations around the county since it began meeting in January 2017. This was the first time commissioners had met at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals building in Pasadena. As Galeno entered the courthouse, Deputy U.S. Marshals told him he had to leave his camera in his car and Galeno insisted he had a right to record the meeting under the First Amendment and the state's open meeting laws, known as the Brown Act, and began filming the officers. They responded by handcuffing and detaining him for an hour. After Galeno was cited, Robert C. Boner, Bonner, Boner, a former federal judge who chairs the commission, told the Times he wasn't aware of certain provisions of the state's open meeting laws and relied on the county's lawyers for legal advice. Rather than pay the fine, Galeno opted to take his case to trial, facing a penalty of up to $10,000 fine, $10, fine and 30 days in jail if found guilty. Galeno, who began his YouTube career. <laughs> Boom, right? as if it's a YouTube career. That's what Gary wanted to do. I want to be a YouTuber. No, he's not posting videos on YouTube. He didn't start a channel to educate many of us about Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 and get, get out to as many people as he possibly could do the takedown of California. No, he just wanted a YouTube career. Sickening. But after showing up at his local council meeting in West Covina, said he was made, said, wait, Galeno, who began his YouTube career after showing up at his local council meeting in West Covina, said he has made a living off of his channel in recent years. Really? Okay, um, his copious videos, 3,237 and counting, <laughs> and counting. Look at how they are writing this. Wow, focus primarily on denouncing illegal immigration and promoting supporters of President Trump. Wow, that's his primary focus, really. You notice how they're not mentioning anything about Agenda 2030? or the very many videos that he has on his channel exposing the corruption taking place in his area of California and exposing how the United States Constitution, the United States government, whether federal, local, state, is no longer operating and he exposes the non-elected officials who are running so many counties, not just in California, but around the country. No, they're not going to mention anything about that. His criminal case may have been a boon for his channel. A recent screed on his own prosecution was viewed more than 10,000 times. On Friday, two court security officers who clashed with Galena took the stand and testified that there were signs clearly posted saying photography wasn't allowed in the courthouse. They said Galena grew belligerent and disruptive 
turning on his camera after being warned several times that it was not allowed. All right, I will link below to, um, I'll actually pause you for a second. I will link below to um, Gary's video on this. We live in Cuba. I was convicted in federal court for asking why my rights were being violated. Um, God. All right. Um, it's, you know, what, what you read in mainstream media and what you hear from opposing counsel and what you hear from judges, you know, it, it's like everybody has their own version of truth or so many people don't care about lying, exaggerating and and um, twisting the facts and all that, especially in the courtroom, that you can never, you will never be able to discern what the truth actually is because these court cases, these inside the courtroom, it's not about truth, it's about winning and that's all people care about. Now, to think that the prosecutor, that the DA and the ADAs went after, you know, Gary on this misdemeanor of carrying a camera. It, it's really, no, the LA Times are not going to be focusing on that too. How unbelievably bizarre it was that they used taxpayer mo money to prosecute Grindall 61. But they're going to try to make him look like an idiot. And he is not an idiot. He is absolutely uh, one of the few people that I respect. One of the few people left that I respect. And he lives the principles he speaks. And very few people do that. But when you do, you really get slammed. So, testifying in his own defense, Galeno said he was a freelance citizen journalist who has attended and filmed local government meetings and legislative town halls for about five years. I believe in the United States of America. You should be able to keep tabs on the government. Right on! In more than 250 other public meetings he attended, he said he never had an issue with bringing in his video camera. He said the security officer all of a sudden exploded at him. So he turned on his camera to document what, I, what he felt was a violation of his rights. And if you watch the video, which is on Grindel 61's channel, um, well, with my attorney mind, I I would have to talk to both people because the video itself, I know Gary, he walked into the building not wanting to just film everywhere he was walking. He wanted to film the meeting and he turned on the camera so you don't actually get to hear the explosion of the uh, officer. But the fact that he turned the camera on then clearly shows something was happening. So a federal building that does not allow cameras, does not allow, you know, any kind of filming, they should make an exception. When they are, when they are allowing city uh, or state or um, county meetings that if held somewhere else, you could film them. The federal law should make that exception. When you attend those meetings, you can still film because the Brown Act allows that. So anybody who wants to not have any transparency for a meeting will set up a meeting in a federal courthouse, in a federal building. It is a way of getting around the public knowing what is taking place. Anyway, all right, so Assistant U.S. Attorney Benedetto Lee Balding said Galeno's disruption of security officers working at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals was no small matter. 
It was Galino who escalated the encounter by refusing to go along with the officer's orders. Yes, refuse. You have to. You have to obey and submit and comply with everything today. And f your failure to do that, the LA Times will come after you. He decided unilaterally he didn't have to follow the rules. Follow the rules. Follow those rules, kids. Be a rule follower. You obey and comply. Authority figures. That we have so many adults who are so repulsive, as far as I'm concerned, because that's what they do. That's what they do. They, they, they fight for nothing. They have no courage. Men, sorry for my language, so many men have literally no balls whatsoever. They talk a good game, and their talk is just horseshit. And when you see somebody like Gary getting somewhat ridiculed in the LA Times, it really, wow, man, does it piss me off. God, this world is so unbelievably sick. And why is it? Because we have so many Americans who are sick. We have so many Americans who are so deranged and twisted, the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society. And when you have somebody who's of sound mind, like Grindel 61, when you have somebody who is actually fighting for not only himself, but for you, for your own freedom, you'll see so many of these unprincipled, sick-ass people going after people like Gary. It is sickening. Look, I'm going to link below. You can read it. I am. I'm just... I'm sorry, Gary. This is... We have YouTubers being thrown in jail. Conspiracy theorists. side thorn and conspiracy granny which is another video hey Gary man you could have just paid that $280 citation and uh, just then gone out you know to a bar and had a couple of drinks and then spend your weekend yeah you know, with your legs up on the table and drink beer watching football why don't you just go along to get along, Gary, man? Huh? Because you can't. Because it's not an option. It's not an option for so many people. Because the principles that they live are bigger and far more important than their own self-centered, comfortable life that is lived by so many the majority of Americans. And when people like Gary are not supported, man. Hmm. Well. You can kiss your own freedom goodbye. Because that's the ripple effect. Yep, I'm upset. We have so many sick, mean people in our country who go after people who really do live their principles. They go after people like this. They go after people who should really be used as a power of example of how other people should live their life. Everything is ass backwards. They go after them. You want to know why? Because there's something inside them that 
whether consciously or unconsciously, it motivates them to go after them because they don't have the courage. They don't have the courage to live the principles that they speak. And they're such hypocrites. They live these lies. So when you have somebody like this who is actually living the principles, that resonates to these people. You know, something resonates inside them. And they get to, to, you know, it's like their their failings bubble up inside them. And they can't face, they can't face the truth of who they are and how they live. So they bury that and they attack. They attack. Some viciously. Jesus. Yep, the problem is... The American people. I'm not going to stop saying that. Never will I stop saying that. With this sick, twisted population that we have, we will never get anywhere. And they, they are literally just hanging on the curtains as the curtains are getting lower and lower and lower with all of the weight of the deranged people in this country. They're just pulling down the curtain to create such darkness, such evil, such darkness, such tyranny. Nobody even friggin' cares that the Constitution is dead. Have a conversation with people. <laughs> the Constitution is no longer. And they hee <laughs> giggle. They friggin' giggle. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, but hey, did you see everybody loves Raymond last night? Reruns. TV land. It's big here. I am so sick of this country. I am so sick of the immorality, the pretense, the hypocrisy, the bullshit lives that people live. And I am so sorry, Gary. 